welcome back. As Nigeria seeks to end her energy crisis, Russia has signed a deal to build two nuclear power plants here in the country. Now, Russian state-owned company Rosatom will build one in the southern part and in the central part of Nigeria. The deal's exact worth is unknown, although some reports suggest it is likely in the region of $20 billion. The company is also involved in discussions in Ghana and South Africa. However, an initial agreement with South Africa to build a plant was ruled unlawful in a court earlier in the year. The deal in Nigeria was reached after a long period of negotiation, with the two countries signing their first intergovernmental nuclear cooperation agreement back in 2009. Nigeria expects the plants, which will initially be operated by Rosatom before they are handed over and will, most importantly, help to deal with the, with the country's energy deficit. All right, our guest, Galtima Liman, the policy analyst and member institute of Petroleum London University, joins us now to take a look at that story concerning Russia, uh, the agreement with Nigeria and Russia to have two nuclear plants built in Nigeria. It's great to have you on the program, Network Africa. Yeah, it's uh, great having you also. I'm here in Nigeria at the moment. The line is not as clear as one would have wished. All right, we'll try to make this uh, worthwhile. Uh, let's look at uh, Nigeria, of course, uh, uh, which has just signed a pact with Russia to build nuclear plants and research center in the country as Africa's largest economy seeks to end its energy crisis. Do you think this initiative will help deal with Nigeria's energy deficit? One of the major problems that I have with a de uh, developing country like Nigeria is that we don't seem to have a strategic plan vis-a-vis -vis the energy policy. Now, I'm here, for instance, in Medjugorje, where you have a sustainable uh, you know, uh, energy uh, vector like the sunlight, and uh, we have not even utilized that. Again, Nigeria has the finest uh, hydrocarbon oil and gas that also is uh, capable of producing a lot of uh, uh, energy for the nation, and I've not seen optimization of that uh, uh, hydrocarbon energy uh, plan in that respect. We still have wind power, we still have uh, uh, the coal that is in the southeast that is not fully developed, and we are talking about nuclear energy supply to a country that will find it extremely very difficult to see how they can uh, handle the, 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 the nuclear waste and things like that. So that's my, that's my major worry. Hmm. So, are you saying that Nigeria is uh, not ripe for this uh, nuclear expedition? Is our environment Look, ready for this? We are going through a lot of difficulties, and uh, Nigeria is going through a lot of difficulties. A, you've seen a superpower like uh, America coming forward, uh, given very positive initiative. I'm talking about President uh, Donald Trump uh, hosting the His Excellency President uh, Buhari in Washington. And, uh, you know, at this moment, there is a lot of crisis going on in the nuclear sector vis-a-vis -vis the uh, North Korea, vis-a-vis -vis Iran and all that kind of... So, if we are not careful, we may be sending wrong signals to some of the real good friends that have been uh, helping the development process in this country. So, tell us, how safe is this nuclear energy? I mean, given some accidents that has happened over the years in other technological advanced countries, um, talk about the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, for instance. Let's talk about uh, having research institutions. You know, we're talking about practical reality. Right now, we're talking about a situation where you have energy deficits and you have already gotten, uh, you know, sustainable energy equipment in terms of what you can do, for instance, with the solar energy. Vast amount of solar energy and you start in the sun, you have the coal that is there burned in the shaft, you know, the tectonic shaft that could be utilized for generating energy. You still have the oil and gas that we're selling in a crude form. We're not refining oil and gas. And that also has the capacity to provide a lot of energy for the nation. And so I don't understand how at this moment of time, when you are now thinking in terms of bringing in a nuclear energy technology that will have difficulties in having uh, particularly how to dispose of the nuclear waste. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big worry to me. Mm. Well, one might be tempted to say that perhaps, you know, Nigeria, given uh, the sheer size uh, of, of the population and, uh, and the standing that we have uh, in, in, in the West African sub-region, it, sh it should be something that we can uh, be able to do. Let's even talk about uh, the Atomic Energy Agency, you know, managed by uh, the government. We have that. But why do you think, that, you know, they've not been active all these years to look at issues <laughs> like this? We begin 
to realize that we are a developing country, that there are fundamental things that Nigeria ought to do in the first place, the better. We like, you know, uh, very exciting uh, big names like Atomic Energy and all that. Okay, it's fine, it's good music. But the reality is that even those that are available to us as a developing country that are, that are the endowment, the factor endowment that we have, have we optimized it? That's the question. It's just like somebody who is now talking about, uh, uh, how do I call it, uh, uh, going to a university when he has not had uh, really uh, the, the fundamental basic primary education or the secondary education. We like to talk big as if we are a superpower. We are not. The earlier we come to realize that, yes, we're a developing country and there are certain things that are endowed by nature for the Nigerian nation and so that we can optimize it, the better for us. All right, uh, Mr. Galtima, a Lehman Policy Analyst, a member Institute of Petroleum London, who is in mid degree. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program Network Africa. Now, to showcase Ethiopia's unique dance culture, Addis Ababa has hosted its first international dance festival. Now, the festival has also presented great works of renowned international companies. The festival is aimed at breathing new life into an already vibrant but mostly traditional dance scene in the country of Ethiopia. From the Somali region to Spain, from Amara to Japan, the three-day event has brought together the best dancers from all over the country and across the world. Ethiopia's first international dance festival culminated at the weekend with troops from across the country and other parts of the world performing to a full house. The festival was organized by Destino, a local dance company launched in 2014. We were promoting Ethiopian culture, which is um, you know, to, to promote Ethiopian traditional dance through uh, contemporary dance. Uh, what, what we are trying to do is uh, we want to fuse Ethiopian traditional dance with contemporary dance and create our own color. Uh, that's what Destino is doing. While Ethiopia already has a well-recognized traditional dance culture and export, Destino dancers say they are promoting a modern form that can help evolve the country's image into a unique and electric dance destination. As a feature, we just wanted like, you know, contemporary dance to spread in the whole Ethiopia and we want to train uh, young offenders, uh, stray kids, orphanage for three years and for 12 of them, you know, the, the, the aim is like, you know, to make them professional dancers where they could use it as a career to change their lives. Dancers came from all over the world to take part in the three-day event held at the National Theatre in Addis Ababa. It's our first time here in Ethiopia and the first time in Africa as well. And it's been very, very exciting very emotional, very emotive, and yeah, we are very touching and we are wishing to come back again, yeah. Destino is one of the contemporary dance groups to train and perform internationally. Organizers say they want Ethiopia to become Africa's dance capital by promoting it as a melting pot for different styles of dance and a place that takes the art form seriously. And with that, we draw the curtain on the program Network Africa. Many thanks for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balubu.